<laughs> That's a good start. <sighs> right, here we go. Thursday Night Live. Uh, I can't read you from here. I've got to go a long way back because I'm using a different camera. So every time I want to read the screen, I've got to come in. Hi, Tanda. Hi, Ben. Hi, whoever you are. Right, let's go. So, bear in mind, please, that this class... Forget that. Hi, Happy New Year. <laughs> so isn't it a bugger that we're locked down again? Uh, really disappointed, but we're getting through it. Now look, uh, my regulars are here with me doing this now, and those that aren't are on social media, they will get the YouTube link later tonight or first thing in the morning. So we're all still doing it. We've still got the cat with us. We've still got the kitten with us, who's massive now. And um, I hope you're all safe and well. Now, I'm not in the room with you, so I can't see what you're doing like we can in a normal class. So you have to look after your body. It's your job to look after your body. I can't possibly do it from here. So please do, don't do anything if it hurts. If something does hurt, stop immediately. Don't forget to set your watches so that the uh, whole world knows you are here doing Pilates for an hour. There we are. And um, look after yourself. You've only got one body, it's yours to look after. But the second thing is, they are saying uh, that if you have a good immune system, you will fight this. And if you have, are fit and healthy, and you're eating all good foods, as well as the crap that you eat in between, but if you're getting all the good foods, you will have a healthy immune system. And I hope then that we can fight COVID from inside. Please, I hope you don't get it. Right, so those of you who I don't know, hi, and uh, those of you who I do know, hi, we always start with mobilising the body. So, uh, sorry, setting up the body. So we stand with our feet together, turn your toes out at 10 to 2, lift your heels behind. Now imagine you have a golden thread from the middle of your head pulling you up towards the ceiling. Look how, if you can see from there, look how much my neck lengthens. Take your shoulders high and down and back and then just shake it off a little bit as though you are wearing a rucksack. You're trying to get your shoulder blades down into your jeans pockets. Neutral spine. Nothing here above the waist moves but I stick my bum out and I pelvic tilt. Let me come a bit nearer when you don't need to see my feet. So I stick my bum out, pelvic tilt. Big movement, because I have quite a mobile spine, which is lucky. If you've got a bad back, this might be your movement. But whatever, make it as big as you can. Now make that movement smaller, 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 and stop in the middle. And that's your neutral spine. To engage your core, put your hand on your belly and cough. And as you cough, <laughs> bring it in. Well done. See the difference? Gotta look tons. Look from there to there. So we look tons lighter. And now we need to lift the pelvic floor, which is inside. So again, I want you to cough, and as you cough, lift it up inside. So it's uh, <coughs> Now we should do both together. Cough, pelvic floor up, engage your core, cough. So the engaged core can also be strong abs. It can also be belly button to spine. Use all those different phrases. Next thing for Pilates, we want to breathe correctly. So it's not like the yoga breath, where you breathe in through your nose and out through your nose. It's a Pilates breath, where because you're holding your core in, you're not moving your belly when you breathe. So what happens is you move your ribs instead. So imagine you have a balloon under each hand and you inhale and as you inhale, you inflate the balloon. And as you exhale through the mouth, deflate the balloon. So if you can control this breath rate throughout all the exercises, you're doing a grand job. Okay, that's the idea, if you're working too hard. Okay. So that's you set up. Now we're going to mobilize all the joints and we mobilize every joint before we work on it. And the reason we do this is because you don't want to suddenly start lifting weights on an arm and that's when you hurt yourself. So we mobilize everything first. When everything's nice and mobile, then we work on the strength and the stretching. So mobilizing in your setup position, inhale. 
As you exhale, turn your face to the side. Now, nothing else moves. I know what sometimes happens is people want to work so hard that they push too hard and they bring a shoulder up to meet. So you don't want to do that. You want to keep your shoulders where they are. And exhale back. Still keeping your pelvic floor lifted. Still keeping your core engaged and your shoulders down and back. Off to the other side. So basically, it's an inhale move, an exhale move. Keep that movement going. If ever you've got a stiff neck because you've been on your phone like this, then just do some of these. Kuba. And if you do have a problem with your neck, keep going. You might be able to go one way more than the other, which is fine. But then what happens is as soon as you start to do this, you should be relaxing the muscles and it should over time get easier. So the last matching pair, you can apply a little bit of pressure, take a full inhale, take a full exhale, and release. Turn to the other side, take a full inhale, take a full exhale, and release. Now we're going chin to chest. Nothing else moves, so I haven't bent my back at all, I'm still upright, and then chin to the ceiling. At this point, me and Jane will be coughing. <coughs> it always makes us cough. And <coughs> change your chest. So it's a move, an inhale, a move, an exhale. And then the last, last pair, bring your bottom jaw over your top jaw. Irons out all the wrinkles in the neck. And then the last one, chin to chest, you can apply a little bit of pressure as long as you don't hurt yourself. Brilliant. Okay, now the shoulders. So take them as high as you can. Take them as low as you can, as high as you can, as low as you can. And then start to turn. Somebody's here. So what I'm doing is as big a circle as I can with my shoulders, without my neck moving, without my lower half moving at all, stationary. This is what proprioception is. Proprioception is knowing where your body bits are in relation to your other body bits and change and the atmosphere around you so that you can um, you can move one arm without the other arm. You can, you know that thing where you hit somebody and you accidentally knock them through the wall and you think, oh, I didn't mean to hit you that hard, sorry. Proprioception is knowing how much force you're exerting. All of those things. Brilliant if you're playing a contact sport. I didn't used to have very good proprioception. Now let's bring the whole arm in. So instead of having a limp arm, we've got a strong arm, strong, 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 or active, whatever you want to call it. Do a small circle first and then go as big as you can without any pain. So yeah, proprioception, I didn't used to have it because people used to say, when I was a gymnast, straighten your arms. And I used to be straightening them, and straightening them, and straightening them, and then they'd say, no, they're bent. Well, actually what I was doing was I was going so straight, I was going beyond straight. And the other thing I used to do was, I don't play tennis, thank God, but I used to hit a tennis ball so hard that it just went miles and out of court and you can never find it again. It's ridiculous, so I gave up tennis. At least with squash you don't lose the ball, hey? So, are you managing to get your arms by your ears or are they out here somewhere, or is one better than the other? Hello, I've got a few more people coming. I can't wave unless I stop, so change direction. So we're making as big a movement as we can without any pain. If you've got some pain, you shouldn't be doing it. So you could just be doing one arm, or you could be doing one arm big and one arm small. Okay. And then we're gonna go out to the side to open the chest. This is stretching your pecs, which we'll be using because we're doing press-ups. amongst other things. So you've seen this, the dog is pointing at the door, she wants to go out, and the only reason she wants to go out is because Simon is preparing food for me. Right, diagonal. Brilliant. And 
And then we move down the body to the waist. So small circles, small, small, small. Upper body's not moving. Imagine I'm still hanging up to the ceiling. And if that doesn't hurt, it goes big as you like. So if you notice, my hips are always facing the front. Think of them as headlights on a car. Headlights always face the front, unless you've got a very posh car where they go sideways now, but generally, headlights face the front. Change direction. Small first. And again, if you've been sat at your desk for a long time and your back's stiff, this is brilliant. And if you had a bad back and you went and managed to get to see a physio, this would be one of the exercises, but they'd be saying, just keep it small because you want to keep your back mobile. If you've got an injury, you need to keep it mobile without hurting it. Okay, now if that didn't hurt at all, then you can put your hands on your hips, take your upper body round the side, down to the front and all the way around. But you would never do this if the other one hurt because this is quite an aggressive version of the other. You can go as low as you want to, it stretches your bum and your hamstrings. Oh, my pets are asleep. Normally they're playing, aren't they? Joining in. And then we're gonna change direction. Still breathing. Still, even though you're here, you've still got your core engaged. Your core should be engaged all the time. I know you forget and I forget. It's a poor connection. It's a bit bizarre. Okay, now let's just go down the side without leaning forward or backwards. So we don't lean forward or back, straight down the side. Okay, what we're going to do next are lots and lots of leg swings. So, we're going to do, if you hold your arms out to the side, that helps with your balance. So, we are going to, first of all, go front to back. Just like this. We don't bend the standing leg, because that isn't giving you a stretch down the back of the leg. So, it doesn't matter how high, even if you only go this high, you should have your foot flexed, not pointed, but flexed. And you should feel a nice stretch. We're doing lots of these. To warm up the hips, stretch that glute muscle at the back. Okay, now we're going to go side to side. So, side to side. Very difficult not to fall over. Like that. Brilliant, and same on the other leg. And then side to side. Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a wide step and back up. And Hi, somebody else joined me, can't see who you are, but... We're just stretching the inner thighs off. Brilliant. Now, inhale. So, if you could get your arms up to your ears before, they should be there now. And sit back into that imaginary chair. In fact, sit back. There we are. Except without the ball. And back up. Inhale. Now, notice your feet and knees are all in alignment. Your knees track your toes. So, in other words, no knock knees, no splayed knees.
and see one more, more time, see if you can go as low as you can. And back up. Brilliant. Now we can do the same with our feet wide, 10 to 2. So now it's really important you don't let your knees cave in. They need to stay over your feet. So you inhale and your feet go wide and back up. So what we're doing now is we're opening up the hips and mobilizing them because we're going to be using them. We're doing some squats in a minute and we are also uh, doing some single leg circles. This time go as low as you want. Some of you, a lot of you will get to the floor and you can rock from side to side. And then you put your hands down and slowly, slowly, slowly come back up to standing. Let's go up onto your toes and now lift your toes. Up onto your toes and lift your toes. Up onto your toes and lift your toes. Right, that's mobilised. I'm just going to move these out of the way a minute. Okay, we're now going to do some squats. So if you've got a chair or a stool, so you can go down onto that. But I've handily brought my ball with me. I'm going to put my straps behind the ball so it doesn't wander off. There we are. Okay, we're going to do 10 of each. First of all, I've got my feet and my knees together. And I'm going to sit on the ball and stand back up. Simple, isn't it? But you need to keep your core engaged, pelvic floor lifted, and the main thing is to keep everything tight. So inhale, sit back. Now, when I come to stand, I just want to go straight up. There's one. Two. The reason the ball helps is because it makes you go that little bit lower than you would if you didn't have the ball. So it's five, I think. Might, no, six. This is why I don't do exercise to music because I can't count. Seven. You'll notice doing this that your knees and feet are clamped together and it's much easier, it's like dead solid. Two more. Dead solid mass, isn't it? Huge mass in my case. There you go, there's your 10, shake it all off. Now we're gonna do the same again, but with your feet at hip distance apart. And the tendency is going to want to be, as you go up and down, to. Uh, knock your knees together and I want you to make sure they stay out. Also if anybody now wants to use any of your weights you can. So we're doing 10 here. So if you want your weights here that's absolutely fine. Look down for one and up for one. Keeping your shoulders down and back. This is the easiest option or you can have them here and as you go down Push the arms up. There's three. Core engaged, pelvic floor lifted, knees not knocking. Five. Six. If you don't want to rest, don't go completely straight. Don't lock the knees out. Keep them slightly bent. Two more. One more. Oh, well done. So, shake your arms if you had weights. And shake your legs. Second time, now, same thing, 10. Feet out at 10 to two. You can do the same with the arms. You can have one single weight. So this time, my new kettlebell. Have you seen how expensive these are? 
because of lockdown, people are buying them and selling them for silly money. Okay, so anyway, inhale. As you exhale, lower down, keeping the knees over the toes and all the way back up. You could do the same arms as before, but by choosing a different arm, we're now using different muscles, which is what I prefer. Don't forget you can ditch the weight. You don't even need a weight at all. And if you're new to my classes, I would definitely never ever say have a weight. So you could do it like this. Make sure the knees don't cave in and stay out. I don't know how many. Somebody tell me how many. Where's Gina when you need her? She always tells me how many. I'm going to do two more anyway. Brilliant, well done. Fantastic. Ditch the weights, shake the arms off, shake the body off. I'm going to let my dog out, I feel cruel. Oh yes, that smells nice. <laughs> I wonder what delicious, nutritious meal Simon has for me. Right, next exercise. Um, he's going to be using mainly, it's mobilisation for the back. So ditch the ball. So it's the press up. We're doing the press up with a good old full on Joseph Pilates press up. So it starts standing up, would you believe? I'm going to do a really quick one to show you. Really quick, and then we'll do it slowly in real time. So inhale, drop the chin, exhale. Arms go dangling down, dangling down, head, 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 head. When you reach a point where your hamstring's screaming at you, bend your knees. But if they're not, all the way down to the floor. Walk out, put your knees on the floor, take your hands wide. My chest will go in between my thumbs, not my nose, my chest. I notice my back doesn't dip and it doesn't lift. It stays flat. There we are, there's a press up. And then you build all the way back to a crouch, straightening the legs to mild tension. I can get mine straight, most people, a lot of people can't. Help yourself if you want to, all the way back up. So there's one presser. We're gonna do loads, okay? So do it with me. Inhale, drop the chin. Exhale, all the way down, all the way down. Bend your knees when you need to. Walk your hands out. Onto your hands and knees, or a lot of you don't need to. So we are in the plank press up position. One press up, all the way back up, rebuild the spine. So the reason we're doing one press up is so we get the use, exhale all the way down. We get the use of the press up, but we also get the mobility for the spine and the mobility for the hamstrings and bum. There's two. All the way down. Hands wide. Press up, press up. There's three. Now I know a lot of you can get down in press up but can't get up. So I'm going to do the halfway house this time. Halfway house is into the upper press up position. Lower yourself all the way down to the floor. Put your knees on the floor and leave your knees on the floor while you press up and then carry on. So I know that most of you can do that. Down for the next one, which is number five, I think. There's five. So doing press-ups this slowly is much more beneficial, but much more difficult than what you will see people doing in the gym when they just bob up and down. There's six. If you need to rest, go into child pose. If you don't need to rest, blooming well done. <laughs> so 
seven. Three more. By now, you should be feeling nice and loose down the back. So try and go a little bit further before you bend your legs. Rebuild each time up to standing. Two more. Don't forget to rest when you need to and work when you don't. Well done, one more. Last one, so stay down here and go into a well-deserved child pose. Well done. It's hard, isn't it? So my heart rate is over 100, only just, but it's over 100, so that shows you what hard work it is. So there's your workout for your arms and your legs got a bit of a rest, but got a big stretch. So the next one, we're just gonna have a balance because we try and do a balance every single week because use it or lose it. We're gonna do tree pose. Tree pose could be here with your toe on the floor and your arms out here. Very few of you will be doing that. Most of you will have your knee, your foot here on your calf. Some of you, like me, will have your foot here. And I can't even get my foot where, you know, where you So, here we go. Tree pose. Shoulders down and back. Core engaged, pelvic floor lifted. Stare at a still, still spot on the floor in front of you. And breathe. Inhale for four through the nose. Exhale for four through the mouth. Well done. Oh, that's just me. <laughs> oh, and when you fall down, make it look like you meant it. Okay, so we do the other side, of course. So again, you could be here with your toe on the floor. Most people will be here. You're just pushing your knee the wrong way where it's never supposed to go. Place your foot. And concentrate on a still spot on the floor. If this is too hard with your hands up here, you can have them here, which also helps. Squeeze your bum muscles, squeeze your pelvic floor, squeeze your abs. I don't ask for much, do I? In through the nose. Out through the mouth. In through the nose. And out through the mouth and down like you meant it. <laughs> okay, next one is a workout for the legs. So, um, it's the good old curtsy, which is a real tough one. I'm just going to move my mat forward a little bit. <clears throat> so the curtsy is foot behind, but I don't want you to turn, I want you to stay facing the front. And curtsy. And you go and take your knee close to the floor, but if you look from the side, we're not leaning forward like this curtsy, we're staying upright. And up and across to the other side. I am going to do 10 on one side then 10 on the other because if you do one on one side and then one on the other it's brilliant fantastic but don't forget you're getting a bit of a rest in between because you're changing muscles. If you do 10 on one side and 10 on the other you're making it that bit harder for yourself. And if you want to you can also do five on one, five on the other, five on one, five on the other but we are doing 20. And then, of course, anybody who wants to, you can use the weights as well. But you don't have to, and you don't need them. Honestly, you don't need them. But, you know, I would, I don't, I'm trying to improve your fitness, improve your muscle strength. So if nothing changes, nothing changes. And some of these people here with me now have been doing this with me for years. So to do it without the weights or without any extra anything, it'd be a bit boring. So here we go, We're going to, I'm going to do 10 on one side. So I'll start with my arms here and curtsy, facing the front all the time. One, two. 
So it's not fast. This is the right speed. Three. Four. Five. Well done. Change if you want to. Six. Seven. I hope Sue's here. She always uses her weights. Eight. Hi, Sue, if you are. Nine. See, notice it's a balance as well. Ten. So now I'm just going to shake it off and change sides. My feet are sticking. I know it's a sticky mat, but crikey. Okay, off we go again. One. And back. Two. And back. Three. And back. Four. And back. Five. And back. Rest if you need to. Shake it off. S change sides if you want to. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Oh, this is hard now on my shoulders. Ten. Superb. <laughs> you were with me on that, well done. <sighs> shake it off, shake it off. Who's here? Tender heart. Oh, hi, hi, hi. Hello, hello. Oh, new, somebody new. Oh, hi, Alison. I'm not going to wave at you because I have to press lots of buttons. Shake it off. Now, what you need now as well is this. Okay, we're going to go uh, plank, down dog. Plank, down dog, plank, down dog. So, <clears throat> let's first of all get our neutral spine. The whole time you're here, you engage your core. You don't let it hang out. Even when we do cow stretch, you still engage your core and your pelvic floor. So, cat stretch. Neutral spine. Cat stretch. Keeping the core and floor engaged. Cat. Cow. Okay, neutral spine. Now we're going to go into plank. Plank is taking the leg out and you see how my hip's high now I need to bring my hip in a line with the other hip and then I slide the other leg out and then I bring one in and then the other one in now what we're going to do is plank to down dog so we're not holding the plank which is good because it's hard so we take one leg out into plank and the other leg out into plank my feet are hip distance apart my arms are shoulders apart Push back on the shoulders, into down dog. Forward into plank, down dog. Keep that movement going. And for those of you who want to, you can come to plank. Once you're there, bring a knee in, take it out. Down dog. Forward into plank, other knee, down dog. Forward into plank. This is the speed we want. If you're doing this with your legs, it's much, much easier. You bring them in slowly. Woo, more difficult. Slowly bring the leg in, slowly take it out. Rest when you need to, and I'll just show you quickly the rest is child pose. Notice in the plank, if you start to dip your bum, then you just give it up. Come down to hit knees on the floor and then into your down dog. But I know that everybody in my class can do a plank. Rest when you need to, work when you don't. Okay, 
feeling. If you're still with me now, well done. Superb. So I'm going to do two more on each side now. And the last one on this side. And the last one on this side. And then, well done, into child pose. Child pose is here. And relax. And if you want to, completely relax, bring your hands behind you. Have a well-earned rest. I'm just going to blow my nose. And I'm going to have a drink. Where are we at? Mm. Hot water and cold water. I think I'm going for hot water. So normally tonight I have a men's class. And then we go to the pub. And we have chips and beer and wine. But you know what? I've done the workout. I can have the wine and the chips. That's what life's for, isn't it? It's not about being a saint. I don't want to go to, to um, heaven a saint. I want to go to heaven a healthy, mm, not quite a sinner. No, I don't want to be a sinner. I want to die healthy. Right, and the next one is the most relaxing one. You're lying, I'm going to do this standing up, so, kneeling up so you can see me, but you're lying down on the floor, on your back. Take your arms out to the side. Bring your hands up so they're at right angles and relax. Now, some people I know can't get their hands on the floor or they might have this big gap. Let me show you. They might have this big gap here, but most, uh, most of you can actually get all the way to the floor and relax there. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Inhale. Exhale. If your back is hurting at all because you're lying down on the floor, just bring your knees up. So this is what you should look like. You should look like this or like this. Okay. Now I want you to bring the palms of the hands up and over and down towards the floor, leaving your elbows in exactly the same place. So it looks like this. And back up. It's a really big stretch for your shoulders. And it's relaxing. Okay, so this is good mobility and everybody can do something, even if your movement is only here and here and here. You've still got some movement, you've just got a message. Keep going because it's relaxing. Inhale, move, exhale, move. I haven't finished yet, Carol. <laughs> okay, the next bit is much more difficult for some people. So you're lying with your hands and your forearms are all in contact with the floor, if possible. If you have any gaps, if your hands are doing this, which a lot of yours do, then stay there and just relax. And some of you, one of your arms is like that, but one's perfect. So what, what you need to do next is inhale and as you exhale, you move your arms up and away from you, sliding your knuckles along the floor. That's the movement. And I know a lot of my clients can all go all the way up to here, which is fantastic. That's what we're aiming for. And some have dodgy shoulders, so they can do one arm really well and the other one not very well, but it's improving, so that's good. As long as you don't go into pain. And it should be relaxing, because the next one isn't. <laughs> so if you do this exercise against a wall, it, you can confer, can't you? It's not relaxing against a wall, but I'm giving you on the floor because you've just worked hard and now you're doing a relaxing one and then we're gonna work hard again. So this is your relaxing move. How kind am I? The next move is side plank. But have a break, deep breath, shake your shoulders. So we're doing side plank. So if you have um, dumbbells, you can use them, but you don't need them. Remember, you don't need any equipment. 
I'm just doing this for my advanced ones that I know are going to be watching this and doing it. Even if they're not here now, they're doing it on YouTube later. Side plank. Very, very, very simple in description, but not that easy. I have got my knees on the floor bent. Straighten the top leg out. Now, you can do this on your elbow, and if you're on a hard floor, you can, I'll do the elbow this side to show you. So now you lift your hips up off the floor and point to the ceiling. Now, without moving these hips, I'm now going to swing the arm under and back up in this speed. And I'm gonna use a weight. You don't have to. But from the side, I want to show you from the side, we're not got our bum stuck out, we're in a straight line. That's the point. We're not here, we're here. And without losing that straight line, there's number two for me. There's number three. Four. Five. Six. You're squeezing your hip up to the ceiling. Seven. Eight. Nine, one more, ten, and relax down, and you need to give your shoulders a shake. So I know some of you there are much better at plank than that, and you will have no knee on the floor. So the next side, I'm going to show you the other option, which, George, George, mm. the other option for this side is high and the reason I do it high myself is because I've got a bit of a nervy pain in my elbow when I put all the weight on it so when I'm working this side I always do high and instead of having my knee on the floor I'm going to do the full one where I've got one foot in front of the other heel to toe are we ready so keeping that hip still one two three Four. Halfway. Well done. Keep going. Five. So breathing. Six. Pelvic floor lifted. Seven. Core engaged. Can you still smile? Last one. That's hard, that, isn't it? Relax. Wrists need a bit of a help now. Okay. The next one might be the last one. No, it won't be. We're going to do single leg circles. Circles. We always do a mini one first, which is with the knee bent. So from the side, it looks like this. We have one leg at tabletop, foot flex. Notice my knee and lower leg don't move, the whole thing comes from the hip, and that's what we want. So I'm going to do three that way, and three the other way. And then change legs. Does my bum look big in this? Three one way. Three the other way. Okay. Right, you have to decide, it's your body. How was that? Was that good, bad, indifferent? So, we're gonna do the whole leg now. You can carry on doing that, because we are gonna do six one way, six the other way, each leg, which is a bit of a killer. So I shall do it from here, and I'll show you this leg. Arms are out, upper body is just relax. Take one foot up as high as you can without any pain. So it might be here. But I'm okay here. So I've got my foot flexed. So pointy toes are pretty, but flexed gives you a stretch of the calf, stretching the hamstring and the bum. So go as big as we can without any pain. And I'm not lifting this hip off the floor. This hip stays firmly on the floor. All the way around, across the body. There's one. This is the speed. Two, inhale coming up. Exhale going down, three, 
but if this is too much for your inner thigh four then you can do it with a bent leg as big as you like bent leg and one more there's six that way so we're going to change direction here we go one this is really working the hip the inner thighs the outer thighs in a good way and the upper body is getting a nice rest there's three there's four and five and finally six so of course shake your legs off rock from side to side i'll turn around because i want you to be able to see what my legs doing we do the same on the other side relax bring one leg up as high as you can without any pain foot flexed body upper body relaxed out to the side bend it if you need to one two three four Nose is itching. And six. Let's change direction. It's very nice. It is work, but it's also a nice, nice stretch. Two. Three. Last one, six, bring it down, rock the hips side to side. Next one is also relaxing. Sorry, but you're gonna have to look at me end to end, which isn't attractive. Arms out to the side. This knee has, this knee has the very last glass of wine in the world on top. And I'm gonna just take this knee out. Hugely attractive, hey? And then bring it back in without moving this knee. I'm going to do five. One. Again, this is about proprioception. Actually, I could do it this way. <laughs> now, now we've got the gist. I don't need to be showing you any bits. Two, three. Three, three, three. Four. Five. And five on the other side. One. Upper body's nicely relaxed, I hope. Two. Three. I haven't spilt any wine yet, have you? Four. Last one. Five. So my heart rate's come right down again now, by the way. Okay, now both knees together and feet together. And can you see my feet? Now, I just need to go back a bit. Don't I? If you look at my feet now, arms are out to a T, knees are tight together, ankles, toes tight together. I'm going to take both knees over to one side. And if you look, my outer foot has to come off the floor. This is now a stretch. We've finished all the work. We're doing some stretch. As melting into the floor. Inhale for four. Okay, what I want you to do now, this top knee, I want you to bring it up towards that hand, and then you're getting a stretch here now. So you've already got the spine twist, now you're having a stretch here as well.
Now slide the knees back together, bring them up to the ceiling, and of course, take them off to the other side. What have I just done? Relax and melt. In four, out four. In for four, out for four. And again. Right, now this top knee. Hello, George. Slide it up towards the outstretched hand. And relax. Should not be hurting. If this is hurting, you're doing it wrong. Bring it back. You're trying too hard, probably. And slide the knees back together. And bring them back up into the ceiling. Go, George. So now straighten the legs out in front and have a full body stretch. So now we're going to do a more powerful stretch for this bum. So I want you to bring one knee in and pull it tight into your chest. So when you're doing that, you're getting a little bit of a stretch in the inner thigh. I'm just looking at you. You can relax your head down, but I'm looking at you. Swirl the ankle round. And the other way. Right, now you see how this bum's on the floor and this bum's on the floor, they're level. I want you to take this knee across the body without lifting that bum at all. So you keep that bum tight on the floor and just bring the leg over. So now you're specifically getting a stretch in this piriformis. Now a lot of my clients have a bit of piriformis trouble, which could be from um, sciatica. And this is the one that you need to do to uh, that last one and this one. But you need to relax. You don't go into pain, you go into mild tension. And you hold it there. And you hold it there. And you hold, now I know you can do this because you've just done it. So now I want you to keep that there and go like that. And relax. And on the out breath, maybe there's a bit more movement. That's a really nice stretch here for me, that is. Now push the knee back up to the ceiling and swap them over. and across, the, oh no, sorry, hold it in tight and swirl the ankles. And the other way. And then take the knee across. So I know that some of you will be saying, but we didn't do the 100. Now I know we didn't, but all the things I asked you to do, I was asking you, relax, keep relaxing, I was asking you to keep your belly button engaged, core engaged, belly button to spine. So you've used your core throughout the whole set. Especially those planks, oh my word. And the plank to down dog. Push the knee up, bring it down, full body stretch and just rock side to side. And then come up to sitting as elegantly as you can. Cross your ankles. You know I hate this, don't you? Now, elbows onto your knees and slowly and gently push the knees wide. Now you've got a, hip, a, a slightly higher stretch. So whereas before it was in your, uh, your glutes and your bum, now it's right in your hips in a good way. And relax. Now take one hand to the floor. Other hand up to the ceiling, grow. Now, grow doesn't mean scrunching your arm out. And paint your fingers across the ceiling, over to the side. So again, it's not about this. It's about growing and stretching. And now this stretch you see is all down this arm, all the way down, right the way into the hip, which is what I want. Relax. Exhale, is there any more? And come forward out 
add to it. Of course, swap the ankles over, which I prefer this side, I always save it till the end. And now, same again. Pushing down with the elbow, the elbows. As you feel miles away from the screen. Keep going, keep going. I <laughs> still can't, too far away. And now I'm definitely too close. Oof. That's horrible. Sorry, didn't mean to do that to you. Now take the arm out and the other arm up. Grow. Paint your fingers across the ceiling. <sighs> Exhale. So just rock them side to side. All right, we need to come up to standing. So you've done all that deep breathing. Do you feel okay? You don't feel dizzy or anything, do you? If you don't feel dizzy, come up to standing. I right? come up to standing like this. You do whatever you need to do. And I'm going to just stretch the thighs off. So from the side, I know from the front first, arm out to the side. You can hold on to the wall if you need to. Pick your foot up. As soon as I bring my heel behind and my knees together, that's when I get the stretch in the thigh. So from the side, it looks like this. Okay. And if there's no stretch here, you could slightly pelvic tilt, which switches it on. And if you've got good balance, you could bring the other arm up. And relax it down, same the other side. Arm out, foot in your hand. Bring the knees together and one heel behind your bum. And then stretch. Again, if you've got good balance, you could take your arm up. Every time you're trying to do a balance, the wider you are, the more help you get. It's like ballast. You know when you see the tightrope walkers with the great big long pole? It's ballast. Here, you have no ballast, so it's more difficult to balance, but it's good practice. Okay, release it down. We're going to stretch the shoulders. Finger, interlock your fingers. I'm going to kneel down and get a bit closer so you can see. Turn them inside out and take them up as high as you can without any pain. And maybe if you go a bit further, maybe, maybe, maybe. And relax it down. Now I'll show you the back from here, look. I'm taking my, clasping my hands behind me, taking my shoulders down and back. I'm folding myself in half down this line here. Next lengthen. Now, a lot of people, when they're doing this stretch, they tend to go like this which is really stressful on your neck, so I want you to keep your neck lengthened and long. And for some of you, that might not be enough of a stretch, so then you can just bring your hands up a little bit. It's up to you, as long as you're getting your stretch. because somebody's just sent me a text. Sorry about that. Okay, we're coming up to standing again. I'm going to bring one, one knee up. You can, if you want to, press on that knee, push on the foot. But if you can do it without, that's brilliant. And up to standing. And I'm told that people feel robbed unless we do this. So inhale. Exhale. Inhale. You know who you are and I know you're watching. Exhale. Inhale. This is just to energize you again, up onto your toes, wander around, wander around, wander around, wander around. Last one. And you are done. Thank you very, very much. 
If you've got any questions, you can either put them on Facebook or Instagram or message me directly. And most of you have got my text, so you can do that. If you've got any special requests for next week, please just, same again, ask. Just ask. And thank you. Oh, thank you, Sue. Thank you, Carol. And I shall see you next week. To the pip. End. End.